Hello. Welcome to Sunday School. This is my uh, YouTube channel where I'm going to be completely unprofessional. I am not a YouTuber. I am talking into my iPad that's sitting on a cushion. And I'm kicking back in bed with my feet under the covers, toasty. I got a cat next to me. This is not a professional YouTube channel. These are not professional art lessons. None of that. I'm just getting all that out of the way up ahead of time. However, if you're interested in painting, if you're interested in making art on your iPad, if you don't quite know where to start and are wondering how to use heavy paint, if you want to hear me cuss and ramble and talk about things that don't seem to have anything to do with painting, but... <laughs> I think do well this is the place to be I'm gonna to try to do it every Sunday and um, if you're interested in more specific one-on-one -on -one lessons you can always contact me and I'll make a tailor-made um, lesson plan for you that's a whole separate thing this is just me having fun painting and talking at the same time which is kind of hard to do so um, bear with me if I go silent for a little while uh, it's it's just because I'm trying to figure something out, and I'll try to catch myself and explain what I'm doing. Uh, I've got a, a reference image that I want to paint, just because it's cool looking, and um, I just like chickens. They look they look really intense. You know, it's easy to goof on chickens, but they're pretty fierce creatures uh, when you get down to it. They're descendants of dinosaurs, of course. So they, they inherited some of that ferocity, even though it's a scruffy little yard animal. Uh, this chicken's from Farm Sanctuary. Uh, they, it's a rescued animal. It was in really bad shape, and they took care of her and uh, got her up and running. Um, if if you want to support a good business, a good effort, Farm Sanctuary is amazing. They do such good work. Um, give them some attention and love and money if if you can and if you know of any animals that are suffering um, that's at least one place that you can you can look to okay moving on um, the first thing I do is I make my canvas match my reference image when I'm going to paint so I'm in heavy paint which is a uh, an application that's available uh, for iPad and Android and desktop versions. I think he made it for everything. So um, I think you can... There's a more advanced version on the desktop, uh, or more developed. I'm using one that works on the iPad. Um, the first thing I do is I, I open Google Photos up next to Heavy Paint so I can use it as a reference. Heavy Paint doesn't have a reference panel of its own so I have to sort of split the screen up and have it over here and if I look down I can see the size is uh, 1469 by 1862 so I want to make my canvas match that as close as possible so I go to resize canvas I start looking at the at the bottom there 14 1460 seems to be as close as I can get. Height 1862. That's about as close as I can get. Let's see if I can get closer. It looks like it. That's very close, that's plenty. So now my canvas basically matches my original. I can kind of hold them up and see that while it gets behind the... Uh, one of the problems with the iPad version right now is I can't resize this freaking panel. Uh, just, it's, that's broken for some reason. I can make it bigger, but I can't make it smaller. Um, just kind of stuck with that it's okay um, but it does block off some of your 
your panel. But that's cool and it's good enough for painting. It's fine. I've, I've got some weird little marks there from before, but that shouldn't even matter. I can just cover them up. So, one of the ways that I like to paint is to work from the very furthest back forward. Like, look at my reference and what's the furthest away? And in this case, of course, it's this dark gray, black in the background fades over to light gray and the light blue down here um so i like to lay stuff like that in first and one of my favorite tools is the chisel radial tool which um it lets you draw this wild you can't see the, it so well when it's black like that you know so you're drawing shapes, right, from a point. You're dragging out from a point and back. And with the jitter, you can get these nice variations. So I start doing that. I start just laying in the background. And I'm, I'm focused more on um, value than color. Like the first step is just I'm getting rid of the gray that was back there. Second step is I'm kind of trying to sort of match my value that's back there. I can do it with this slider. Just make slight adjustments. Um, and the saturation, this upper right corner is a much more gray color but you can see I still get these cool little that's not in the original right you know we just gotta have oh crap what happened to my what happened to my chicken just have a bunch of stupid shit on here um it has more character right like like it still kind of reads as that same gray it has more character with the um, with the multiple colors in there, and I'm sort of I'm not looking at the chicken right now. I'm looking at these wedge shapes. Look at the triangle in the upper right corner. Just kind of that's a gray triangle. It's not a chicken. No, just it's indicated now. And one of the cool things you can do with the chisel radial tool is switch it to a mixer, this M over here. Which means wherever I drop down, I can drag out into another color and pull it up. And it mixes. It makes this really nice transition. Which is kind of what I have in the original. Um, and you can use that to kind of give more variation to your your strokes anywhere. Um, so another thing I see right now is this like light blue kind of area down here. I take off mixer. Back to just chisel radio. Then I can mix that out to get something that's more subtle. You can see how the complexity builds, right? Because you're... There it is up close. Right, that's just... That's magical. Again, it's it's similar to the original, but it has more character. We're only a couple minutes in. Um, we have something interesting going, and I'm not starting with a pencil drawing. You'll notice, like, 
I don't, I don't know how common that is. I watch a lot of online videos of people making art, and it seems like, like a lot of people do really rigid paint, pencil drawings under it. I don't know if I've just done so many of those that I don't want to or need to now, or if I've really... I, I think... I don't believe in it anymore. I think that's where I'm at. I think I, th I think these big color shapes are easier and more important than um, than a pencil drawing. So, with that in mind, basically knocked in the background here, and I can kind of sort of see where a chicken might fit, right? Just the beginnings of it, but I can sort of see. I'm gonna think about like what's my darkest gray in this chicken. It's like right under the chin there, right on the you know, the lower part of the feathers. But I'm gonna find something that's close to that. And since the background is um, cool, I'm gonna make my chicken a little bit warmer, but super desaturated. Like no, that, that's really close to darkest that I see in there. I'm going to use that as a base to build on. Start knocking that color in even darker. In all the places that I see the chicken occupying in the original. And I switch my, my value up pretty regularly on this slider, just so I get some cool variations. And of course, working my way up, it's, it's not gonna be as dark. And once you have that down, and you get some some mixes and some variations, like if I say I just pull some mixes across. Then I've got a sort of a spectrum. I can use this E eyedropper to pick that up, to pick up whatever color I like, paint with that. So that's another way to get your colors. And I'm just looking over here, I'm looking at these abstract shapes, right? It's still not a chicken, it's just weird, weird shapes and forms. And a lot of it, it's I, I sort of on autopilot when I do this stuff. I'm not I'm listening over to the ambient music playing, and then I'm thinking about some other topic or something that irks me. Uh, <laughs> I'm sort of you know working through it in the back of my head while just on autopilot making these shapes match as close as possible to what I'm seeing over here. And I'm thinking of it as, you know, I'm, I'm sort of learning about this, this image. And this technique means that um, you can paint anything, because it, it doesn't matter what it is, you're always doing the same technique. You're always finding shapes and um, replicating them, representing them in your own language. <clears throat> and I understand that the a newer version of heavy paint is gonna allow custom brushes, which is really nice, but uh, it, these are really powerful. If I click on that CR, I can see the shape I'm painting with. It's this weird scribble kind of shape, but I've got all these others as well. Um, this one is really useful. It's similar. Um, it it's not so much <coughs> excuse me what what shape you're painting with. It's that it's that you're seeing it clearly. 
and using your mistakes too, like not not even mistakes. Like, say I put something down in the wrong place, it's you know it's not a hundred percent. Like this little feather here, I kind of have that high up, right? Like I don't have it where it should be. So, don't don't be hesitant to fix it or change it or really obliterate it completely. Freaking blow it all up. Right? Because you might find in that... I mean, it only took seconds to build it in the first place. You can rebuild it. But in going in and, and mixing it up like this, you might find these fascinating little shapes that really work for your painting. It may not be exactly what's in the original, but it works like crazy for what you're trying to do. Um, heavy paint lets you be destructive. And you have an undo. You have these arrows. So if you really do something you don't like, you can undo it. I've found that painting forward through those things is more informative. Um, and, and by painting forward, I mean um, don't use the undo. Just keep painting. Just keep cover what you did with something new and better. And that's a little bit more like the experience of painting in real life. Many people have spent a lot of time just using analog paints. <clears throat> There's no undo button on that, of course. And if you get too used to, or accustomed to digital tools, um, it can make analog painting really daunting. You go back to acrylics or something. And just seem like you don't have all your favorite tools. I think that's what I like about heavy paint so much. So it it eliminates digital trickery. It's very much uh, It relies on your skills. <laughs> when you're doing nice painting and heavy paint, it's because you painted it. it. It did nothing for you. Other than provide you with these killer freaking tools, right? Like, that. that's pretty big. Um, so. Since I've laid out a lot of the technical stuff and I still have just painting to do, I'm going to wander off into a little bit of art philosophy here, like beyond technique into why the hell are we doing this stuff, right? Uh, not to sound too hyperbolic, it's a pursuit of truth and accuracy, um, since the Trump administration started, I uh, I just hate bullshit. I hate it so much. I don't want any bullshit in my life. No lies. No made-up stuff. You know, for years I just... I, I drew and painted out of my head. Only. You know, it's just... I prided myself. I'm like, I'm going to build this all from scratch every time. <sighs> Well, that's bullshit. It's cool, but it's bullshit. Um, the real world is infinitely more mysterious and freaking wild. And you can, you can learn about it and appreciate it through art. It's like the reason to paint is to, to know something about the world that you're in, like, not always be looking inward and navel gazing, but you know, what does a what does a chicken really look like? I'm not drawing a cartoon of a chicken. I'm trying to figure this thing out. What does he really look like? And the best path to that is through abstraction, through through breaking down its component parts, through really observing the flow of the shapes like the way that the way that these feathers just cascade across the top of his head 
I don't have to paint every feather to get that. I move my brush in those those shapes and it starts appearing. Um, and it's it's very much like a puzzle that you're putting together in real time, except you're creating the puzzle pieces as you go. I know that sounds kind of corny, but <laughs> that's what it is. So, um, and I find that I, I keep, I start with a big brush and I work down to a smaller one. I'm, I'm always, you try to use the biggest brush possible. The cool thing about the chisel radial tool, you'll notice this is the only thing I've used so far is CR. Um, it's, you know, say I want a big shape, well I can just drag it out and get it, right? Or I can get a small little shape with it, a single little mark or brush stroke like that is, is pretty easy. So that's, that's why it's such a versatile tools. I can just pull it out into anything I, I want. Alright, so now I'm going to look back at my my triangle kind of shape there, that gray triangle, and figure out the beak based on that. We could kind of, that's a tricky kind of shape. And luckily you can just keep on messing with it until it fits, until it flows right. Just push and pull. I'm going to try to get some of those pinks in there, at least a base mid-tone of... So that gives me something to build the light colors on top of. They call it, in, in comics, it's called flats, right? You do your flat colors first, and then build out details and highlights and shading and stuff. So I, I kind of think of flats <clears throat> when I'm blocking in a painting. And I'm certainly trying not to be precious. Like, I don't want to... I don't want to get too in love with anything... early. It seems like it's easy to do. You get this cool mark down and oh wow. I nailed it. Wow. You can nail it again. If you nailed it that first time, my gosh, what are you going to do the second or third or fourth time you try it? Really super nail it. Maybe what you thought was nailing it wasn't nailing it. So that's what I'm I'm always working on in myself is like can I nail it better? Is there some cooler way to interpret that shape? Um, and a lot of times the answer is no. So it really is cool. Now I I'm a a believer that the painting always looks better than the original uh, because you have that the added human dimension that the element of interpretation style flow um, it's i don't know i've i've said that to a lot of people and i've never heard anyone disagree you know, even if it's your kid painting it, if it's, it's, you know, somebody without a ton of practice or skill, there's just a magic to an image that somebody interpreted. It doesn't matter if it's a perfect photographic interpretation. It probably isn't. I would hope it, it isn't. It, it matters that, um, that it's... It's gorgeous. So I'm, I'm always looking for that gorgeousness. These are all the kinds of things that no, 
they feel real obvious to me because I, I think about it all the time. But I realized nobody taught me this when I was a kid. Nobody. It was just not part of school or home life. I had a very supportive family. I had an artist's grandmother who lived across the street. Um, she was a, an oil painter. And it, art was a part of my life. It was, you know, her paintings were on the wall. <clears throat> Regularly saw tons and tons of art in books. I, I checked stuff out of the library and all that. And stuff just still, it never came up. And it was a giant mystery for me for years because... You know, especially without an internet, who knew? Who was talking about this? Like, you know, what are you supposed to do with art? It takes a ton of time to figure it out. It doesn't seem like there's any jobs in it. Why is this thing that's so seemingly out of date still so attractive and you know, pulling me? You know, there's a ton, a ton, a ton of questions like that that I just had to answer for myself. And maybe that's still the way you have to do it. Maybe you just have to figure out... Maybe you have different questions than I did. And you got to figure them out on your own. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to put some effort into sharing what I do know. Who the hell knows COVID hits and freaking get knocked off the board for no fault of my own. It'd be nice to at least have these some YouTube videos up talking about the little bit that I figured out. Um, there are a ton, a ton, a ton of ways to approach painting and art. I'm one of a million on the internet and in the world and um, don't take any of this as gospel truth however I ain't going to steer you wrong I'm not going to bullshit you so much I'm going to cuss for a second here so much of fucking art school is bullshit straight up just straight up bullshit they're charging you a ton of money for the stuff that you can figure out on your own um, I've <sighs> I've rarely met anyone that credits their experience in art school with any kind of success in art, if that makes sense. Like, they may have found success, but, but it wasn't art school that got them there. Um, and I, th I really think that you can, again, sitting at home, like I said... I'm in bed with the cat next to me right now. Um, <laughs> it doesn't take much infrastructure to do this kind of thing. I'm using an iPad Pro. You could easily do this on a Mini. In some ways, the Mini's preferable. Um, it's a really, really nice tool for making pictures. I see stuff that people do on their phone. It's amazing. In fact... So much of the stuff people do in heavy paint is amazing. So take your time and look around and see. Um, I'm not going to plug Instagram because I just quit Instagram. I love Instagram for the, the exposure to art that I get and the nice feedback. And I met a lot of cool people there. But man, Facebook is a fucking cancer. And we, we just have to... I have to figure out some way to live without it. I know, I know, I'm posting this on YouTube. No, I know. Um, it's, it's all really screwed up. These people at Facebook, at Google, have done a lot of damage to our culture. Um, they've, they've enabled really horrible behavior, really, really horrible people by taking part in those platforms we're, we're giving it our thumbs up we're saying oh it's okay <laughs> if you 
aid insurrection <laughs> as long as I can if we can stay in contact with my gym coach or whatever. It's silly. We don't need we don't need Facebook. We don't need Instagram. We need time and practice and um compassion. Honestly, compassion for ourselves and for others. And that's in short supply on social media, my friend. Short supply. Anyway, that's my rant there. Um, definitely look up artists that are using this kind of stuff and see what they're doing. It's, it's amazing and beautiful. I see young people that they're just starting out they're killing it they're just doing the most beautiful artwork you know at age 15 16 sometimes it's just amazing heavy paint seems to attract cool crowd like it's really intensely talented and um, focused artists big shout out to Vaughn Ling who um, developed heavy paint and invented it the guy is brilliant he does fantastic work So I'm still using the same tool. I haven't changed it at all. Just um, This has all been dragging shapes out. Um, I'm going to go in and do some mixing. I'm still going to use the chisel radial tool. And I'm just going to look at the places that are blurred down here and sort of start making cooler feathers. cutting across some of the shapes that I laid in before. And I can see this sort of array that's coming down, so I want something like that. Sorry for the clicks and pops. You know, this, these are too chunky for the photo looks like. It's still pretty abstract, right? Now. And we just pull one shape into another with this tool. It's so juicy. And since the colors that I laid down are um, appropriate so will the transitions that this tool makes will be appropriate. This isn't going to be a super long video. Like I said, I'm going to try to do another one um, next Sunday. I would, I'd love to hear comments or see um, anything that you guys paint and by you guys I mean whoever stumbles on this this video I have no idea who you are weirdos you can see mine is not it's not identical right it's not the same exact colors I'm, I'm being loose and free with it and I'm knowing that I can easily paint on top of this I can easily find more appropriate colors and paint down so I'm still thinking about it as an underpainting but so often the underpainting starts looking cool and looking looking like exactly what you want like this is a little bit of a lemon yellow over here that I don't see on that side 
them. So I, I kind of want to keep that under control. But chickens are weird. And light is weird. So it doesn't look impossible. Looks, looks completely feasible. An awesome quote I heard years ago was about style. So your style is mistakes that you can't help but make. And like my interpretation of that is don't don't consciously <laughs> try to have a style. Like you're gonna have one because you're gonna make mistakes. You're going to have errors. You know, if I were to lay my painting directly on top of this other chicken, like the photo, it's not going to be identical. This stuff isn't going to be in exactly the same place. Um, that is fine. Um, many, many people... How should I say this? Many viewers, many people that view artwork do not care about the literal accuracy of it. They, they just... Your friends are going to love it. <laughs> your your teacher is going to love it. You know... Your, your boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever, your significant other is going to love it. Because you're spending your time making art instead of doing what so much crap, right? So much like wasted effort in you know obsessing over the news or um, I don't know washing the freaking deck outside for the 200th time um, I think we're kind of society wise we're sort of like a dog gnawing its own leg off you know, we, we got everything we got food and housing and clothing and we're all warm most of us are warm a lot of people are suffering on the street but we have culturally we have everything and we we find that we're still not happy. I think a lot of people are freaking out over that. Like, oh my god, I got two and a half kids and a, a house and a car and I did everything I was supposed to and I'm still not happy. Um, I would I'd suggest that maybe they're not creatively satisfied they're not producing anything to um, to mark their presence on earth you know, that, that's a bummer you know when you see other people that are doing that that's a bummer and you sort of wonder how you can get a piece of that action but it's, it seems impossible. Well, this is a path to that. This is like... You can study shapes... And make cool stuff... Quick. You can be on board with the creative... Zeitgeist... For lack of a better word. I think way faster than you could learn to play guitar. Or... some of the other creative activities you, know, you want to be a professional photographer that's a pretty high the entry level is pretty damn high like the cost of entry I guess is what I would say in the thousands of dollars to, to get the gear to do this well that's not the case with with heavy paint you know it's it's not impossible but it works on your phone you, know, you can get a little stylus it doesn't use the pressure sensitivity so you can get a little regular stylus in your phone 
and um, have a blast and really make nice artwork if you're if you're into it. Just sort of honing this down. Um, my very last step will be highlights. I'll go in and put the lightest lights in. And usually, when I do that, I'm, I'll sample. what's currently my lightest light and then make it even lighter so it's the same color it's related I'll do that with my pinks up here that's my current lightest pink that's my new lightest pink what my size real small I'm just matching as close as I can in one pass not bad for a speed painting while I'm freaking talking. Don't talk and draw. It's like drinking and driving. They use two different parts of your brain and it just, it just ain't healthy. It's not the way to do it. Sit and be quiet and sip tea and do your drawing. I'm only able to do it because I've spent Years tattooing. You got, kind of got to talk a little bit sometimes. Alright, so I'm going to pick that white. It's pretty close to pure white. You never really want to use pure white. Color Jitter helps with that. Um, I think even if you get close, you'll see that there's some variation in there. I'm gonna go and look around and see where where's the light really hitting the tops of these shapes. Be able to do one more pass and mix in too. I drop the brightness down a little bit. And that's killing some of that lemon yellow that was there, which is a good thing. But it, that little bit of yellow exists as an undertone. It makes the Makes the brush strokes more interesting. And it looks like there's layers of feathers, now, which is what happens in a real chicken. You got the under layer and over layer and all kinds of crazy stuff going on. It's not just a plastic chunk. So the, the complexity 
really helps out with the, the chicken look. It's actually right next to another one, so just not going to And this isn't quite light enough, so I can sample that color, make it brighter and less saturated. here too. This guy's starting to look like something. Yeah, so it's a quick chicken, um, and it's basically my technique. Even if I were to spend two, three hours on something, um, that's how I'm going to do it. It's not going to be too different. A lot of that time is going to be spent like honing little bits down, like where does that crown really come across. And, you know, how does the highlight in the eye look exactly? And maybe even, you know, erasing some parts and working it back out, but it's still the same process. You're just doing the same thing um, on a smaller level and, and honing it down. So. And then mixing again. One more passive blends. And that's, that's pretty much, pretty much a chicken. Um, there are a couple other cool tools here, like the smudge is really neat. And so if I have a place like back here that's a little too crispy, and I want it out of focus, smudge is great for that. Basically anything that's supposed to be blurry. You know, if, if everything is sharp and crisp, then um, your eye doesn't really know where to go. If the sharpest, crispest part of this painting is the eye, your eye will go there immediately. And that's what happened in the photo, right? Like everything is is out of focus except for the the head, the face. So you do one pass with that smudge. And just kill kill anything too sharp that's distracting from And I'm still, like I said, still just using chisel radial but with the smudge tool
So, yeah, that's that's uh, that's probably a good place to leave it. Um, I could go on for quite a while with this, but um, I've I probably talked enough, and I've probably given you enough to work on or think about, and I'll do some other subject matter next time and I'll work my way through that and see if the same techniques can work to do a car or a building or um, or anything I, th I, I really do believe that this method of painting is the most versatile you don't have to learn a million things you learn one one approach that works for a million things. Uh, I, I think it's extremely useful. So, all right, thank you for taking your time to listen to me ramble and paint a chicken. Please give some love and support to Farm Sanctuary. They do great work. Please take a little bit of time for yourself to make a painting of something um, it is wonderful for you, it's wonderful for your mind, it's wonderful for your self-esteem, it's wonderful for the world around you, you can make people very happy, your mother will love it, your dad will love it, your sister, your brother, whoever you give it to or send it to, they will love it. Um, let's, let's try to work to make the world a better place, as corny as that sounds just have to do it. I'm going to break out of my chisel radial for just a second and use that the oil tool is what I meant to use. It's, I don't find it's very much like oil, but it does make a nice line in places where you need a line. And you can sort of just drag long yeah that's cool alright thank you for your time um, I'll see you next week at Sunday School